Owning a Shapeoko gives you the opportunity to make custom cabinetry of nearly any size. With the precision of CNC, it also allows you to perfectly locate hinges and shelf pins as well as create next level elements. Strap in kids, we're about to make 100% of this cabinet with your CNC machine. Step one, draw by hand. Think about your dimensions, your overlaps, your overall size, how many shelves you want, how big you want each compartment to be, and all the things about a cabinet you can think of. Incorporate those in your drawing first before you head to the software. I like to draw on my iPad. I use a program called Notability. You can use whatever you're comfortable with right down to good old pencil and paper. Yeah, that's old school. By beginning here, you'll start to clarify some of your ideas and work through some of the potential upcoming problems. It'll save you time. Next, head into Carbide Create. Tiling in Carbide Create Pro automates the top and bottom cuts, but you can definitely figure it out in Carbide Create Basic. Word to the wise, buy your hinges before you begin. Also, pay for decent ones. Go to your local cabinet shop, the big box store, or maybe even Amazon. I'm using Blue Motion, Slow Close. You'll definitely want to have quality hinges. Nothing makes a cabinet feel cheap quicker than cut rate hardware. And you'll need your exact hardware on hand to make accurate measurements to be entered into Carbide Create. Additional advice, for version one, make a test rig. There's no need to waste a ton of wood, just worry about testing the interfaces of your design first. For this one, I thought about my dividers, putting them on a quarter inch inset to provide stability and exact placement. I had to consider how my ends would interface with the bottoms and tops to form the overall box. I also had to figure out how to pre-position the clips as well as the hinges along with all the mounting holes so that when I pull the piece out of the machine, assembly is a quick and simple process. Okay, let's be clear. There's nothing quick nor simple about figuring this out for the very first time. There's all kinds of stuff that you're going to have to go through. Expect to go through some material, expect to go through some iterations. The rule of three is in effect here. If you do something three times, it will be perfect. We can get through version number one with little waste and a little bit of learning. Believe me, the first time you make and sell a cabinet to someone else, you've made all of your testing money back. It's definitely worth the time. Here it is. The completed cabinet is hung on the wall, six feet long, two feet tall, and about 16 inches deep. There are several mistakes throughout this cabinet, but you'll notice it's totally functional. It's on the wall, it's gonna live here in the office, and that's not gonna change. You have a lot of leeway when it comes to the body of this cabinet to make mistakes. It's okay, because the cabinet gets covered by the doors. Let me show you some things that I did wrong and that I will do differently on cabinet number two, because there will be cabinet number two, it's gotta go right over there. Clean up the mess that's off to my left. Errors first, and the biggest one are my shelf pin locations. I did not effectively, in the software, match up my shelf pin locations on my ends and my dividers. Now, this isn't a huge deal. Because I can go in and cut grooves inside the shelves in the program when I make my shelving, which I'm gonna do here in just a second, you'll notice an error right here in the middle. I cut another center divider and I have not put the divider in because I decided that, hey, I might want to have a larger cabinet space in the middle. I can always put a little strip in here later, something to fill this space, or I can leave it because who cares? It's the very first version. It's in my office. I own it. When it came time to figuring out the clips and the hinges, the clips were easy. I simply put them in a position along the side of a piece of plywood and traced the holes, then measured accurately with a set of calipers and I was able to lay them out first time perfectly. With the hinges, it was slightly more complicated. I imagine you could look up the exact specs of how far the hole needed to be from the edge of the plywood, but what fun is that? Do you read directions for things or do you pull them out of the box and start using them and putting them together? What kind of person are you? So I took my best guess as to where that hole needed to be located relative to the edge of the plywood. I then also measured out for the mounting holes. Version number one came up a little bit shallow on the overall hole and I had to adjust the mounting holes as well. But it took one revision, I moved it a little bit closer, that had it within spec of the adjustment of the hinges. Remember, these hinges are adjustable and you're gonna have to do that later in the project. With two versions, it came out perfect and now I have that layout, I can use it in all future projects. For assembly, I used a combination of glues and screws. For the center dividers, I used only glue. And throughout the entire process, I utilized these 90 degree blocks from Rockler. Could you make these yourself on your Shape Oko out of any material you want? Yes, you could, but sometimes I find it faster just to buy a pre-made product designed for this exact use. On the ends, I got impatient. I didn't want to wait for the glue to dry. 
So I went ahead and put some screws through the bottom in my overlaps. Would those overlaps be strong enough by themselves with just glue? Absolutely. You'll have to decide what assembly method works best for you and your goals. For me, on a version one, I could care less. I'm more likely to try something than not because I figure version two would be pretty good. And by version three, I have something that's saleable. I'm not worried about this first one at all. In other cabinet builds, I've done a French cleat on the back of the cabinet. So you can hang the cleat, then you can bring the cabinet in and hang it on the cleat. This one, I just bolted straight into the studs. I went ahead and measured out where they were. And when the guys brought the cabinet in, we got it positioned properly on the little bracket that I laid below it, went ahead and screwed it straight into the studs, and it's in. There's no backer to this cabinet, but in most cases, you never see the interior of the cabinet anyway. And again, level one, so why do I care? Part of the reason I had success with this was that I'd laid out a series of holes in the middle of my four x eight sheet. I cut those holes first, and then went ahead and screwed my four x eight sheet down into the MDF of the Shape Oakville 5 Pro. And I did that because you should, with any plywood project, have work holding somehow in the middle of your design. What that process assured was that I could get the exact depth that I wanted, a quarter inch inset, even in the middle of that sheet. That made my dividers fit perfectly. I've made a file for the 4x4 that lays out the location of the MDF slats as well as your T-Track. This way you can overlay that on your project and look at locating holes into MDF slats. That's on Cut Rocket, free from me to you. When it came to the doors, I had two separate issues, one on the ends and one in the middle. In the middle, like an idiot, I didn't measure properly. So the first time I hung the doors here, I had my hinge positions correct, my clip positions correct, but my doors were too wide. That was a bummer. So I recut the doors and I'll use those panels again later to make something else. On the outer two doors, my problem was that I had not laid my art out properly from the top edge of the door and the top edge of the cabinet as it related to the clips and the hinges. So the very first time I went to put on the outer door, I put on the top hinge and the bottom hinge didn't fit. My solution for that was to make some small strips to test that problem in much less wood. So I mounted those little strips to be sure that that was correct. I remeasured again to make sure that my door width was proper. And when I brought those doors in, they in fact went on perfectly without a problem. And the middle doors on their second make actually came out just fine. Remember that with our videos here on YouTube or on my.carbide3d.com, we're trying to give you concepts and ideas that you can apply to your next project. Rarely is it a one-to-one, -one, take the file and run it, especially with a big project like this. You're gonna to wanna to take the ideas that I have here, the mistakes that I've made, and apply them to your project and try and not make some of the same mistakes you might even make different mistakes. You believe whatever you want, Floyd. And recover, learn, and come back stronger. That's how it goes. That's the fun of CNC, is the experimentation and the win at the end. With all the corrections made to the doors and hinges and everything fit to the cabinet, I was able to dial it in from the hinge adjustments and I could not be more pleased with the fit. This is where CNC gives you that precise cut, those exact sizes, so that when you put it all together, it is just right on the money. The top to bottom, the hinge feel, the location, my gaps, everything is on point. I can't wait to get to the next project. I'm gonna make some alterations to the doors, maybe to the ends, as I've done with another cabinet here in my office. It's filled me with confidence that I've figured out a lot of the basic interfaces, and I can take that art now, copy it across to my next project, buy the same hinges, and I know what that result is gonna be. Hope this video filled you with ideas and motivation to get out and try your own cabinet project. We'll be back with a whole bunch more videos and inspiration, certainly more cabinets. Kevin Barnett from the Carbide 3D Studio, gone.